Hello everyone. In this presentation, I am going to explain in detail about pin retained amalgam restoration. For the students who are doing dentistry, pin retained amalgam restoration is a very important topic. At the end of this presentation, I have included an outline for the students to write in the exam if this question is asked. So stay tuned till the end. I hope it is very simple and each and every one of you can understand it easily. If you are a dental student, kindly consider subscribing to my YouTube channel Smart Dentistry Student Zone. And if you are a practitioner, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel Smart Dentistry. First of all, we have to understand what is this pin retained amalgam restoration. It is a type of amalgam restoration in which pins are placed in the tooth surface in order to provide added retention. Just imagine a tooth which is grossly destructed. There is no sufficient tooth structure which is remaining in order to provide an adequate retention for the amalgam restoration. So in those situations, we place pins in the sound tooth structure and these pins will aid in providing a retentive feature for the amalgam. In the past, it is practiced quite exclusively and at present, the use of pin retained amalgam restoration has declined most probably because of the advancements in the composite restorations. Once after placing these pins, a matrix band is applied and the restoration is built up. If done properly, it has a very good clinical success rate. Let's see about the indications for pin retained amalgam restorations. First, it can be used as a controlled restoration in teeth that have a questionable pulpal or periodontal prognosis. Pin retained amalgam restorations can be used as controlled restorations in teeth with acute and severe caries. Just imagine a patient who is visiting the dental clinic has multiple caries and they are very severe. Nowadays, we use glass enamel cement for this purpose, but in the past, pin retained amalgam restoration was used for this purpose. And pin retained amalgam restoration can also be used as a definitive final restoration. It is a long lasting restoration if done properly. In case of root canal treated teeth, pin retained amalgam restoration can be used as a foundation restoration. On top of that, we can do a crown preparation and we can provide a full coverage restoration. In case of a grossly mutilated teeth and when there is some errors in occlusion and when aesthetics is not of a big concern, and economically, some patients may not be able to afford for cast metal restoration. In those situations, also we can go for pin retained amalgam restorations. There are few contraindications whenever there is a significant occlusal problems which cannot be corrected by doing a direct restoration like a pin retained amalgam restoration then pin rate and amalgam restorations are contraindicated. In some situations, tooth cannot be properly restored with a direct restoration like amalgam because of the anatomic, that is the different location. For example, a third molar where placing a matrix band pins will be very, very difficult. In those situations, it is contraindicated. Pin rate and amalgam restoration has so many advantages. It is a conservative tooth preparation compared to that of cast metal restoration. And for a cast metal restoration, it requires more time for preparation. At least two visits are needed. But for a pin retained amalgam restoration, we can finish it in a single visit. And it is very economical compared to that of cast metal restorations. Some of the disadvantages of pin retained amalgam restorations are because of the placement of the pins, there can be dentinal micro fractures, which can lead to the fracture of the tooth. There can be micro leakage between the restoration and the pins or the uh, tooth surface and the amalgam restoration. There are chances and which might lead to development of secondary caries. The placement of the pins actually increases the retention but and it reduces the strength or the resistance of dental amalgam. While placement of the pin, the pin can enter inside the pulp chamber or it can perforate to the external surface of the tooth leading to failure of the restoration. And again, in case of uh, grossly destructed tooth with multiple cusps missing, it is very difficult to create the anatomy intraorally by carving dental amalgam. Pin retained amalgam restorations does not protect the tooth from fracture, but a well-designed cast metal restoration will protect the tooth from fracture. Next, we have to see 
what are the different types of pins available basically there are only three types of pins available they are the cemented pins the friction lock pins and the threaded pins this is quite important remember there are three types of pins cemented pins friction lock pins and the threaded pins for the placement of the cemented pins the pin channel that is the preparation which is made on the tooth before insertion of the pin which is called as the pin channel the pin channel is made to a bigger size and then the pin is cemented to the pin channel but for a friction lock pin and for a threaded pin the pin channel which is prepared will be smaller in size compared to that of the type of the pin so the friction lock pins are tapped forcefully inside the pin channel and the threaded pins are threaded forcefully inside the pin channel but the cemented pins are passively cemented inside the pin channels next we have to understand the length of the pin which is placed inside the dentin and the length of the pin which is present outside to be placed inside the amalgam restoration for cemented pins the pin channel should be of at least 3 mm and outside it should be 2 mm that is the pin after placement will be protruding 2 mm out of the prepared tooth but in case of friction lock pin if the pin channel is of 3 mm that is 3 mm of pin is inside the pin channel 3 mm of pin can be extending outside this is quite more retentive compared to that of cemented pins and for threaded pins they are very retentive 2 mm of the pin channel will be prepared and 2 mm of the pin will be protruding out of the pin channel after pin placement next we have to know in little more detail about the threaded pins so the threaded pins are the types only type of the pins which are widely used even today in dentistry this is widely marketed by a brand called the tms pins or the thread mate system they market it into four different sizes the regular minim minikin and minuta the regular is the biggest of the pin the minim is smaller minikin is still smaller and the minuta is the smallest all these pins are available in different designs that includes the standard design where a hand wrench can be used for the pin placement self shearing two in one link series and link plus in the coming session we will be seeing what are the these different types are these different designs then we have to know how to select a pin again as i mentioned only there are three types of pins the cemented pins friction lock pins and the threaded pins the cemented pins are very passive pins so in case of root canal treated teeth we can go for cemented pins and if the available location of the pin is very close to the dentino enamel junction very less amount of tooth structure is remaining in those situations we can go for cemented pin and the bulk of dentine to accommodate pin is limited on for sclerosis tertiary dentine or calcific barriers in all those situations we can go for cemented pins and for cross linking of two parts of the same tooth like the two cusp of a maxillary premolar can be uh, cross linked together with the help of a cemented pin and for u and l shaped pins can be used in case of class 4 restorations before the advancement of composite restorations pin retained restorations were used even in case of anterior teeth to do class 4 restorations that is angle fractures in those situations we can go for a cemented pins the friction lock pin are indicated only in case of vital teeth and the pin should be located at least 2.5 mm from the dentino enamel junction if the distance is very less it can lead to fracture of the tooth very bulky dentin should be available to circumferentially encompass the pin at least 4 mm in three dimensions should be available friction lock pins can be placed only in very accessible areas of the mouth because after preparing the pin channel the pin have to be placed in the channel and it has to be tapped in inaccessible areas this tapping is not possible next we will move on to the threaded pins threaded pins are again indicated only in case of 
vital teeth. Except cemented pins, which is indicated for root canal treated teeth, friction lock and threaded pins are indicated only for vital teeth. The pin location is at least 1.5 mm from dentino enamel junctions. The minimum number of pins are needed for the restoration because the threaded pins are very retentive. And the maximum retention of pin to dentin and to the restoration is provided by the threaded pins. And whenever this maximum retention is needed with the help of a minimum number of pins, then we should always go for threaded pins. And only properly hydrated vital dentine we have to go for threaded pins. Next, let's see about the pin type and the retention. The threaded pins are 5 to 6 times retentive compared to that of same type of friction lock pin, which is 2 to 3 times retentive compared to that of cemented pins, which are the least retentive pin. So we have to understand that threaded pins are the most retentive type of pins and the cemented pins are the least retentive pins and friction lock pin is somewhere in between the cemented pins and the threaded pins. Pins cannot be placed in any location of the tooth. There are specific locations in each tooth and only in those locations we can place the pins. So in order to place a proper pin, we, we should have a good knowledge about the tooth anatomy. Radiographs must be taken and the size of the pulp chamber have to be evaluated. The evaluation of the external contour of the tooth have to be done. The amount of the dentin which is remaining, the extent of the cavity preparation, the angulations of the tooth and the age of the patients have to be taken into consideration. So based on this, we can place pins in the following locations. In the maxillary arch, in the maxillary central incisor, except the palatal that is close to the cingulum area in all other locations we can place pins even in case of lateral incisor we can place the pins in almost all locations except the palatal that is in the cingulum area in case of maxillary canine mesially and distally placement of pin should be avoided in case of maxillary first premolar mesially there will be a developmental depression so pin should not be placed in the mesial surface of maxillary first premolar. In case of a maxillary second premolar, we can place it in almost all the locations. And in case of a maxillary molars, the pin should be avoided in the mesial buccal line angle. In all other locations, depending upon the availability of the tooth, the pins can be placed. In case of mandibular arch, the pin placement should be preferably avoided in case of mandibular central and lateral incisor because of the very limited and the narrow tooth structure. Again, if it have to be placed, we can place it in the buccal and the lingual surface. In case of a mandibular canine, in the mesial and the distal aspect, pin placement should be avoided. But in case of mandibular first and second premolars, the placement of the pins more close to the buccal and lingual direction should be avoided. And in case of mandibular molars, in the mesio buccal aspect pin placement should be avoided. Certain locations are avoided because the chances for the penetration of the pin into the pulp chamber or to the external surface of the tooth are more. So those locations should be preferably avoided. Next let's see how many pins should be placed for each restoration. Number of the pins are determined by the amount of the missing tooth structure, the amount of dentin available to receive the pin safely, the amount of retention required and the size of the pins which we are using. As a rule, one pin per missing axial line angle should be used and we should always use the minimum number of pins which will provide the adequate retention for doing the restoration. In the picture we can see that in the mesial and the lingual walls are missing. So in the mesiolingual line angle one pin can be placed. So for each missing line angle one pin can be placed. Next let's see about the pin placement technique. So in short First, we have to prepare the pin channel. After that, 
it is going to be different for the three different types of pins for a cemented pin we have to loot or cement the pin with the help of a looting cement for friction lock pin we have to tap the pin inside the pin channel and for threaded pins hand wrenches or the rotary equipments are used to thread the pin inside the pin channel for the pin channel preparation the following armamentariums are needed the twist drills the number one two or three the round burs and a measuring probe first the round bar is taken and at the location where the pin is intended to be prepared a small dot or a small punch cut is prepared in that same location a twist drill in a slow speed handpiece is used for preparing the pin channel the this drill have to be choose depending upon the type of the pin which we are using depending upon the size of the pin the exactly corresponding size of the twist drill have to be chosen and after preparing the pin channel a measuring probe which is named as the omni depth gauge is used for measuring the depth of the pin channel after preparing the pin channel the pins can be placed inside the prepared pin channel according to the respective techniques again for a cemented pin after preparing the pin channel we have to coat the pin channel with the looting cement using a lendolo spiral in a slow speed handpiece then the cemented pin is taken and it can be placed passively and let the cement to set so this is the technique for placing a cemented pin next for a friction lock pin the pin channel is prepared remember that the pin channel which is prepared for a friction lock pin is smaller than the size of the pin so a friction lock pin is now taken it is kept at the pin channel and it is tapped with an instrument and pushed inside the pin channel so it will be tightly fitting inside the pin channel and for self threaded pin placement again the pin channel is of smaller in size compared to that of the size of the pin the placement of the threaded pins can be of different types one we can use the hand wrenches or we can use the slow speed latch type hand piece that is a micro motor hand piece for that also there are different types of pins are available like a shearing plastic sleeves and self shearing pins we will see one by one for the first technique a hand wrench is taken in that a pin will be attached so the wrench will be holding the threaded pin along with it after that after preparing the pin channel the pin along with the wrench is taken it's threaded inside the pin channel then the wrench is loosened and it is removed so this pin will be tightly threaded inside the pin channel the other modifications are that the pins will be loaded with the help of a latch type attachment so this latch type of attachment can be put in a slow speed hand piece and between the attachment and the pin there will be a plastic sleeve once the pin is threaded inside the pin channel and it becomes tight the plastic sleeve will get sheared off so the pin stays there and the latch will get separated from the pin other modification is the self shearing pins in this the latch type of attachment will be fitted with the pin with a small attachment so once the pin get engaged inside the pin channel it will get sheared off there is another modification called the two in one pin where the first attachment will be quite feeble and the second attachment will be little more stronger so the first the pin can be engaged inside the pin channel and the first pin will get sheared off next in the next pin channel the next pin can be placed and it will also get sheared off once it gets threaded inside the pin channel so this is called as the two in one pin so that's all about the technique for placing the pin inside the pin channel after placing the pin sometimes we may need to bend the pin in order to do a proper restoration sometimes the pin will be protruding out of the contour of the tooth 
in those situations we may need to bend some situations it will be impossible to compact dental amalgam properly with the location of the pin so in those situations we may need to bend the pin in order to bend the pin in hand instrument should not be used along with the tms bending tool is provided tms stands for the thread mate system so for the bending of the pins we should only use the TMS bending tool which will prevent cracks of the tooth structures and also the it will avoid the pin breakage. After placing the pins, we have to do a proper matricing. Matricing will be very difficult in case of pin retained amalgam restorations because it is going to be a big restoration. Most of the cusp or the tooth structure will be missing. In those situations, we can go for a compound supported matrix or an auto matrix, which will be really helpful. In some situations, we can use copper bands to do this type of restorations. The conventional small matricing systems or sectional matricing systems cannot be used for doing a matricing for pin retained amalgam restorations. After that, compaction of the dental amalgams will be very difficult in case of pin retained amalgam restorations because the compaction will be hindered by the placement of the pins. So, we have to add in small increments start compacting from the rearmost area where which will be very difficult to reach so those areas have to be filled reaching and then finally the occlusal surface and the accessible areas have to be restored it is mandatory to respect the rule of two while doing a pin retained amalgam restoration the pin should be at least engaged for two millimeter into dentin the length of the pin above the pulpal floor should be at least two millimeter and the pins should be covered by two millimeter of dental amalgam at least so these are called as the rule of two which have to be respected while doing pin retained amalgam restorations one of the modification which is suggested as an alternative to pin retained amalgam restorations here with the help of 1156 or 1157 burr which are round end straight fissure burr with 1156 burr having 0.9 millimeter diameter and 1157 bar having 1 millimeter diameter and to a depth of 3 millimeter we have to prepare pin channels so inside this pin channels with we are preparing with the help of burrs for 3 millimeters the margin of the channels which are prepared have to be beveled after doing matricing the amalgam is placed inside the spin channels which are prepared especially at the transition line angles in the tooth and the restoration is completed so instead of placing a pin inside the pin channel and restoring on top inside the pin channels also it is restored with dental amalgam so this is called as amalga pins there is something called as the amalgam insert for this type of restoration circular chambers or deeper cuts are made vertically into the dentin and it is restored with dental amalgam so in this situation also pins are not placed a circular ditch or a channel is prepared surrounding the two structure so the restoration will be standing on the occlusal or surrounding the tooth structure and also it will go deep inside the channels that we have prepared so this are called as the amalgam insert now let's see about the possible locations of failure of pin retained amalgam restorations so the pin retained amalgam restoration can fracture by the fracture of the restorative material that is the dental amalgam material can fracture then the separation of pin from the restorative material can happen the pin itself can fracture and the pin can separate it from dentin and sometimes the fracture of the dentin can take place failure is more likely to happen at the pin dentin interface than at the pin restoration interface there 
can be some errors which are associated while doing pin rate and amalgam restorations. They are the broken drills, the broken pins and also the loose pins. The drills means that the twist rails which are used for preparing the pin channel may get broken off and it may get caught inside the pin channel. Sometimes while placement of the pins while threadening the pin may break off. Sometimes after placing the pin the pins will be very loose and it will come out easily and there will be no retention provided. And there are some other errors which are associated with the preparation of the pin retained amalgam restoration that includes while preparing the pin there can be the pin may get entered inside the pulp chamber so which is called as the perforation into the pulp and sometimes the perforation can happen to the external surface of the tooth which can happen above the gingival level or below the gingival level. If it happens above the gingival level, then the pin can be cut off at that location and it can be finished. But if it happens below the gingival level, then the gingiva may be reflected and the pin can be exposed and that area can be cut off or if needed a small cavity can be prepared and that area can be filled off with dental amalgam. So we have to understand the perforation or the pin can enter inside the pulp chamber and if it happens then we can treat it like a healthy tooth with a mechanical pulp exposure a calcium hydroxide paste can be applied and recently we can use MTA and after that the pin can be placed usually there will not be any problem associated with it or the perforation to the external surface can be above the gingival level or below the gingival level coming to the conclusion pin retained amalgam restorations if done properly they are very good long lasting very cost effective but it is technically sensitive and doing restorations in certain locations are quite difficult. So finally if this question comes for exam what are the synopsis points that the student should remember while studying? First there should be a small introduction in that introduction we will be writing what is a pin retained amalgam restoration then we have to write about its indications contraindications advantages and disadvantages then we have to mention about the types of the pins the cemented pin the friction lock pin and the threaded pins here we will be mentioning about the size of the pin channel and also the the length of the pin which goes inside the dentine and which will be standing outside then we will talk about the pin selection that is when a cemented pin is chosen when a friction lock pin and when a threaded pin is selected next we have to write about the pin type and the retention the cemented pins are the least retentive threaded pins are the most retentive and friction lock pins are somewhere in between then the pin location especially which are the locations we should avoid placement of the pins then the number of the pins so for each transition line angle there should be one pin the pin placement technique so inside that the pin channel preparation we should always write about the armamentarium and the pin insertion technique like how for a cemented pin is looted how a friction lock pin is placed and a threaded pin is placed then about the pin bending the tms pin bending tool then about the matricing and the restorative procedure the compound supported matrix should be remembered then the rule of two words about the amalgam pins and amalgam insert which are two of the modifications of pin retained amalgam restorations then comes the failure of pin rate and amalgam restoration what are the locations the pin may get failed and the errors in the pin retained amalgam restoration like the fracture of the drill the separation of the pins or the loose pins or the penetration inside the pulp chamber to the external surface of the tooth that is supra gingival or sub gingival followed by a conclusion and references students can write the references of three standard textbook one is the operation dentistry by Marsuk, second the art and science of operative dentistry by Studvans and the third the operative dentistry by Schwartz. So these are the three standard textbooks where pin retained amalgam restorations are covered in detail.
Thank you for listening to this presentation. Hope this presentation is useful for you. This is quite a complicated topic, so I thought of simplifying it. If you are looking into the textbook, there will be much more added points. But I feel if a student can remember these many points which I have mentioned in this presentation, it will be adequate for the student to write the answer in the exam or answer for the questions in the viva and even if you are doing some of the clinical works this presentation will be helpful i will meet you soon with another presentation have a nice day thank you